Welcome to Narragansett, Rhode Island, home to gorgeous beaches, beautiful scenery, and a strong fishing industry. Living so close to the ocean, we know how important fishing can be. However, just a couple hundred miles up the coast, in the Gulf of Maine, the fishing industry is even larger. Many fishermen rely on this industry for their income. The demand for seafood in this region is so high that overfishing has become a serious problem. As a result of overfishing, their industry has been put in a serious distress. New regulations passed by the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, released in November 2014, have taken the number of cod fishermen can catch and have cut it by 75%. A cut this drastic will have many large effects. What gives NOAA this kind of power to enforce harsh regulations like this? In 1976, the Magnuson-Stevens Act was passed with the overall goal to conserve fishery resources. The Magnuson-Stevens Act, or MSA, named after two forward-thinking members of this committee, provides the architectural framework for the conservation and management of the nation's fisheries. The MSA was last authorized in 2006, at which time significant improvements were made. Named after former United States Senators Warren G. Magnuson, and Ted Stevens, the act has been reauthorized in 1996, 2006, and has recently began another reauthorization process last year. Revisions also provided fishermen and the councils with new management tools to rationalize fisheries if they wish to do so. This act essentially gives NOAA the power to enforce new restrictions based on their scientific findings. Under the new cod restrictions, fishermen are only allowed to catch 250 pounds per trip down from 1,000 pounds last year. After a new study in summer 2014, Noah realized its stock had plummeted more steeply than thought. To learn more about our topic, we spoke to Ben Martins, the executive director of the Maine Coast Fishermen Association. So, hard to know um, how big of an impact it's going to be, but for our fishing fleet up here, um, you know, they, they fished eight months this past year, most of the guys. Um, they're maybe going to be able to get one month out of that fishing year next year. Essentially, NOAA wants to stop cod fishing in the Gulf of Maine this year. As John Bullard, NOAA's Northeast Office leader, says, we're trying to absolutely shut down fishing where there are concentrations of cod so there will be zero cod caught. Anything that can catch cod will not be allowed in these areas. Also, recreational fishermen will be affected. Recreational fishermen in the um, in federal waters need to have a license to be able to go out and catch fish. Um, what they have is they have a bag limit, so they're allowed to catch and bring home a certain number of different types of species um, that are a certain size. And so right now, um, the recreational fleet isn't allowed to catch um, and keep any cod fish. It doesn't mean that they don't catch them. Um, it just means they can't bring them home. In effect of these new regulations, fishermen all across New England have come to question NOAA's scientific methods regarding their calculations of fish in the water. The reauthorization provided more explicitly for market-based fishery management through limited access privilege programs and addressed the need to improve the science used to inform fishery management. The Magnuson-Stevens Act created broad goals for U.S. fisheries management and a highly participatory management structure centered on the fishery management councils. As Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker said, you're talking about a 65,000 square mile area in which a 75 mile trawl is the basis on which they made the decision to close it. I don't know if I consider that to be adequate or not. It doesn't sound adequate to me. With cod stocks seeming to have dropped so rapidly, fishermen are wondering where all the fish went and if overfishing was the only problem. Janet Nye, the lead NOAA researcher said, during the last 40 years, many familiar species have been shifting to the north where ocean waters are cooler or staying in the same general area but moving into deeper waters than where they traditionally have been found. With the Gulf of Maine warming faster than 99% of the world's oceans, it yields the question if overfishing is the only problem. This cut on cod will cause many fishermen to shut down their operations for the year knowing that what they're allowed to catch will not be enough to live off of. I think we need to figure out a way to balance keeping people fishing and, and also you know, protecting our fish. I think that some of the stuff that we could have done in the past and taking cuts earlier 
um, would have been um, a preventative and a preemptive thing to do when we knew that the, the stocks weren't healthy instead of pushing off the cuts for years, cuts for years, which is what we did. While lots of fishermen will be forced to shut down, some will be able to stay afloat. However, an increased price on the cod they catch will definitely be necessary. Supply from countries such as Iceland and Norway will affect the price as it will often be much cheaper than local catch. The question becomes, will the people be willing to pay more? You know, you hit a certain price point and people aren't willing to pay anymore. Um, right now, most of our local fish are already um, being sent to, to niche markets. If people are not willing to pay an increased price for local catch, will any fishermen be able to survive? Some believe that if these restrictions are lifted after one year, fishermen will be able to restart their operations over again. However, it is not that easy. Fishermen will have to find work for a year. They will have to put their boat somewhere and maintain it with another job, and could lose their dock slip if they are forced to give it up. They're going to have a hard time being able to make it through this year of cuts. And, and to be pretty blunt, I don't think that it's going to look better after one year. I, I think this is a multi-year problem. To try and help fishermen keep their operations going, NOAA has taken a healthy stock in Haddock and doubled the quota, allowing fishermen to catch double what they were allowed to last year. However, fishermen have said that they are not able to catch haddock without catching cod mixed in. Haddock and cod are mixed together, so it's really difficult. I don't know that you'd be able to go out there and catch haddock and avoid cod. The harsh reality is that these new restrictions that are made possible by the Magnuson-Stevens Act will have many serious effects on fishermen that could take a long time to restore.